again, I just I just read the one of the Bob Dylan biographies, and you could see it again in his career. In the '60s, he got wildly he became wildly famous and known for the protest singer. He was you know a lot of the songs that he was wildly regarded for were protest songs. You know, talking about all the the Vietnam War and all the you know the state of America and stuff. And then after that, he's like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Like that, like, yeah, it got me here, but like, that's not, I don't want to just be a protest singer. And it's also interesting because there's another artist. I don't know if you know the name or in that same time period that I started doing research on, because like, you know, there was names in the Dylan biography, but an artist named Phil Oaks, which was why he was very famous in that time period as well. You know, friends with Dylan and everything, but he kind of almost pigeonholed himself as a protest singer and he got pretty decently famous from it but he kind of never expanded and he kind of just stayed there so it's also interesting where you talk about like the fact that like an artist kind of being stuck in that uh in that that one first half of the career that kind of never goes anywhere is also interesting as well yeah i in in, in like in a way god forbid ironically i would i would reference god there but to, god forbid i would i would like try to like start talking about buddhism or something like that so this is this is very like superficial what i'm going to say about buddhism because i don't understand buddhism but I know that some Buddhist monks, I believe they're Tibetan monks, make sand paintings. They're like sand drawings, the different colored sands, and, and they, they will have the different various uh, denizens of the afterworld or whatever, it, it, you know, kind of like depicted, and, and it takes them many days or weeks. And then they're done. That's their, I don't even know what to call it, but that is their process. And then they, they blow it all away. Mm. Right. And and then they wow. collect all. The, so all of the different organized colored sand granules, you know, are they're, they're made into this beautiful painting. And then they go, they all get like swept away and probably into like the same urn or something to where the sand becomes mixed, like in the way that it is on the beach. So that it would be like impossible in a way for anyone to ever break those sand grains out again and organize them and make a painting out of it again. So I, what I'm trying to say about that is that anything that you're constructing as an artist is both a vehicle but it's also like a cage so Very so it, so the, the the degree to which you're you, you're going to build something it's almost like it's similar to the first half and the second half again like you take a very zoomed out perspective and go okay well anything like you're going to practice your way into you're going to want to try to figure out a way of practicing your way out of and wow. beyond and forgetting yeah. it like just practice it learn it develop it and then figure out a, a not only a way but also a reason to forget it like really really get bored with it and not because you didn't practice it or master it but but master it get bored with it and move on because those instruments that you're going to use those vehicles are they're going to become burdens eventually yeah. if, if if they're not up, if, if they're not transformed yeah very very interesting especially i would even say creative burdens as well like you know it stifles you after a while but you know you gotta as a creative we really should constantly be creating you know and like if you kind of stay stuck in that one little urn of colors you know you're never gonna be fulfilled exactly i i i think that create being creative to me seems more about listening and if you're populating sort of like all your thoughts with your own agenda a very limited kind of mm. agenda and a narrative even if it's based off of, you know, I want to get better or I'm not good enough. All those things are limitations to eventually limitations. They might be useful. It might be useful for you to say, I'm not good enough. It might be useful to say, you know, I need to get better and I need to master this specific thing. And you're very one pointed on that. And then all of a sudden it is totally irrelevant and it has to be, it has to be thrown out. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. 